What's going on guys? Today's the day I finally do it. Sign the boost this thing. So what I'm gonna do before I actually start is show y'all everything I got and just, you know, give you a couple heads up and yeah. So here's all my hot side and cold side piping. Like I said again, check out this pipe. Make sure that this hole is bored out to the correct size. So what I had done is well, I put in another clip. So the problem comes from this pipe. If you ever had a chance to look into this side, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a small hole compared to what it should be. I cut out the back because this is how we're gonna fix it. But looking at the back, if you can see the welds, the black around it, that's where it's supposed to be. And for some reason, we got that little hole. Thing, so when you're buying your waist gates, when you're buying your waist gates, just to save you a little bit of money, make sure that you get, well, if you're having to rev, using the Rev9 kit, make sure you get the 38 meter, millimeter flange one. Because what I did is that I just got a regular tile 38, but then I realized that there's no way it could fit unless if I got a adapter plate, which I got on eBay. So now it fits fine. So make sure you do that. Another thing is if you want to run like an aftermarket blow valve, make sure the flange is good. So I went with a tile, tile Q, and the regular flange doesn't support it. It supports like another 38 millimeter one. So what you got to do is you got to get welded. So your aftermarket blow valve could fit. Another thing, if you didn't know, is that you would definitely need slim fans. Cause if I show you, there's no way that this pipe's gonna go all the way through down without a smaller fan and maybe a cutting of the shroud as well. So first I'm gonna start with the fuel, which is fuel pump and injectors. Then I'm gonna move on to the hot side. I also have aftermarket headers. Another disclaimer, you can't run aftermarket headers with the kit because you won't have enough space for your down pipe. Then I'm gonna do the oil pan spacer. My plan is to do everything but like the actual piping less. So that I got that to do. Then you have the oil pan spacer. And then after that, then I'll actually start doing the kit, which I'll start from the exhaust, so the hot side, and then move to the cool side and finish it up and get this thing trailer trailered out my garage and for it too. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is this Warbler 450. As you could see, the bottom bond is pretty big compared to the OEM fuel pump. So I'm gonna have to make a couple of modifications to the housing, which I'll show y'all in these clips. So starting with the fuel pump, it's located on the left side. I don't know if your car is like this, but mine is blue. So that's how I know that's where my pump is. So what you'll need is a fillet head or a flat head. Make sure you don't strip these when you take these out. After this pops off, remove this connector and remove this hose. Be careful because fuel will come out if you had a full tank or some type of fuel in there. All right, so now I'm gonna pull this off. Be careful for fuel. Oh, that's leaking off. So not too much came out, but just be careful so you don't make a mess inside. So finally to take it out, just make sure you take out these six bolts and then the whole assembly should come out. All right, the fuel assembly's now out. My dumbass didn't know that I had a full tank, so don't do this on a full tank, guys. It's gonna be messy. All right, to take out this little top piece, there's gonna be a connector right here. Not connected, a little tab that you just need to lift and it'll pop right off. So our old fuel pump is out. This is the OEM Nissan one. So this car has not been touched in that way since 03, it's pretty cool. And here's the Wabro 450. Bigger pump, especially at the bottom. So as you can see, if you were to just put in like this, it wouldn't really fit at the bottom part. So we're gonna have to cut some off. So after watching the Aaron Newman video, shout out to Aaron Newman, we're gonna cut to up here. So the bottom of the pumpkin fit, and then we're gonna cut about, say a quarter of an inch right here so our new connector could fit through. And it'll easily cut through this plastic precisely, so you'll be good. Cutting it, everything's good. The connector fits, this fits in good. With this, I should hold it into place. So now, after I cut it, I just wanna, 
just wipe off all this little plastic chunks that I have around it. So I'm gonna just do that real quick. So I had the same issue as Aaron as well. When I, when it was time to put this back on, it would not go in all the way. So what we need to do now is just cut the tip, which I'll show you in a second. All right, so what we're gonna do is cut from this line right here and test and see if it works. So this is the cut. Hopefully it's enough for it to close down completely, but we'll check right now. All right, so I just test fit it and it fits perfectly. So the only thing left to do is just to put on the filter. You see that big hole goes on this one and then the small hole goes on that one. Now you just press it in. Hit hard hit. That should be good. So the last thing to do is get these to connect. And you can see that your OEM one won't connect with the aftermarket one. So we have to cut this off and then put on our new one. All right, it's just the old one off. All right, boys. Last thing to do, we crimping them. So what we're gonna do is make sure the wire is stripped. Then you're just gonna press it on there tight so it doesn't leave. So that should be a good crimp right there. Next one. Tight. Shouldn't be able to go nowhere. And then just connect it to the new one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how it fits first like this. And just let it come off. Make sure it fits good, how I like it. And then I'm gonna crimp it from there. So red. Red goes to brown, black goes to black of course. from this side. Since I don't have the actual crimper, something like this would be better to use since it's skinny. So you can get a better bite on it. So this should be good. And then the last, last one. Um, this portion of the video is pretty much going to be describing this is mainly for um, Infinity G35 slash D50Zs um, within the year of I believe 03 all the way to 06 um, and this is for boosted cars when you're doing an aftermarket pump and boosting your car so guys as you can see I did drill out the hole with the bit um, right until where I can just go right through the metal. After you pass the metal, um, you want to stop. You don't want to go any further. Just pull the bit back out and be really careful when you're also doing it to try to go slow with the bit and steady. And then after that, you should, um, it should look like this. All right, guys. So now we're going to be putting back this piece in that we modified. Um, like I said, this piece goes right in here. So it goes like this. And uh, just push that in. Try to do this with one hand. Yep, there you go. Push it right in. And then you take the plastic piece. Be really careful again. Um, these uh, grooves, these grooves right here, make sure they're sticking out. And pop them in. So after you pop those in, um, you should be good. You should look like that. And then remember that one, do not forget to put that o-ring in and the hole we drilled faces out this way. So, and make sure you connect your connector and then we're done. So we just gotta put the pump back together. The fuel pump is complete. 
This wire is kind of sticking out some, but it shouldn't matter, it'll fit in the tank. So the only thing left for y'all to do is just put it back in. And that's self-explanatory because it's just the complete opposite of what we did. So I'll just do that. And next is the injector. All right, so the last thing we need to do before we start on the injectors is just make sure the fuel pump is priming. So I have my dad over here hooking up some power to the car because the battery just died. And let's see if I can hear it. Well, y'all won't hear it, but I will. <laughs> that's a loud pump. That's a loud pump, boys. It's in. Next, uh, injectors. All right, so to take off your injectors, of course you gotta take off your plenum. Don't think that I'm careless about this car. I'm just staying on the plenum because this one's cracked and I have another one over there. So no need to worry about it. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth with taking out the plenum because this is something I hope you know if you're gonna tell me your car. But if not, there's a lot of nice YouTube videos out there explaining it. So yeah. Alright, so from here you see, took off your lower plenum and your upper plenum, so your fuel rails are exposed and your injectors. So all we're going to do is just take off these bolts so we can raise up the rail and then disconnect the injectors, all six. And then here are my two injectors. Well, I'll find them and I'll be back. All right, so um, these are the injectors. I got the Bosch EV14. Sorry about the noise, but it, if y'all can see, thanks to the Corona, this is how people got to graduate. Messing up my day. So yeah, it is what it is. So it was only four bolts, one, two, three, four, that holds on the rail. I know, cause this is the first time my rails have been removed. So I thought I had to disconnect more stuff, but really just need to wiggle them a lot and then it'll eventually come up. So here we have our OEM injectors, which I no longer need. So all we gotta do now is take off the clip like so, and then injectors should just twist out. There might be fuel in here, but doesn't matter. Go. So just repeat the process for the other injectors and put them back in and you're good. So I'm gonna do that now. This is the OEM and this is the Bosch. So the, this is a crazy difference. This one's slimmer, but this one is a four squirt. I don't know if y'all can see that. And this is double that, it's about eight. So hopefully this thing's gonna be good on 85. The Barbara was still good for 85 and not injected. So same way that she took these off is how you install them, except that these need to be um, there's a pigtail that comes with these, the adapters, because these are just universal injectors. So shout out to VQ Fuel Upgrade. Just click these up to here and it'll adapt right to your VQ motor. All right, so these are the pigtails. So I'm gonna just give you a quick demonstration. So the best way to look at it, if you had these type of injectors, is gray with gray. So these are for the OEM VQ. It has snap, and then it is black to black. So you just do that and your injectors are connected. So I might have just finished up the others and then starting the whole transmission. All right, so to do the hot side, what I'm gonna do is just take off the whole front end of the car since I'm gonna replace the fans anyway. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but for me, I think it'd be much easier. So that's what I'm gonna start doing now. So I took out the batch part and taking out this with the fan, the truck. So yeah, I'll keep you updated. So I took out the front clip so we're gonna begin the hot side piping, but this is just a quick disclaimer for you guys that are looking into the kit. If you're gonna do this, make sure you don't get aftermarket headers. Cause if you see, there's no space. Actually, let me get the down right uh, just to show you. So this kit was designed for cars with stock headers. There's a, of course, a knockoff of the Turbonetics kit. So if you see with this down pipe, there's no way that this pipe is fitting through there. Cause this comes off from the high side of the turbo and has to go down there for the high side. So that won't work, but with the OEM headers, you should have enough space to pass all your pipes through here. So that's why we have to run um, OEM headers. But yeah, so after that, then we're gonna get onto the actual downpipe, putting on the, uh, the turbo finally and stuff like that. 
but this is where I'm at now. This is not a problem that y'all may face if you don't have Aston Margaret, but if you do, make sure you take those off. We have Z30 Rico outside of natural habitat. Alright guys, so we have the headers out. Now it's time to put back in the OEM ones. I know oh, I did it. Yeah. I did a shitty dog with the wrap, but who cares? But just to compare our size. If you can see, this is OEM versus aftermarket. Aftermarket goes out way wider. I don't know if you can see as good as we can, but that's why we, I can't run my downpipe. So another disclaimer to y'all. Don't run dumb shit. But if you're NA, you run them. So, um, of course, when you're putting on a turbo kit, you don't want loose leaks. So what we're doing right now is putting some, just some liquid gasket over every single metal piece, including one thing I found out from my boy, uh, shout out Y-A-G-D-E. He's, um, he made the forum for the Red Knight kit. What he's telling me to do is for these, where you usually put the V-Bank clamps on, what you're going to want to do is get an old exhaust gasket like this, and then just cut a hole around it so you could just have another type of gasket on it too, instead of just having it be a bare metal and metal. But right now, I'm just putting some fresh RTB on it and just having it stick on so I have no leaks. So we're gonna do that for uh, each metal and metal piece that we have to put on for the kit, and we should be good to go. So um, we're putting the pipe that crosses over the transmission right now. Um, we just installed the passenger um we just installed the passenger header and now we installed the pipe to the passenger header as you see we have the rtv um it's on there and then we tighten on the bolts we really didn't tighten down the header all the way so we could like install all the other bolt all the other piping that is supposed to come down here so i really recommend keeping everything loose so um at the end you can just go ahead and tighten up everything but as for like the gaskets and stuff like that, you wanna make sure that's tight because that's gonna um, dry up pretty fast. But um, we're gonna keep you guys updated when we get to the other side. Um, see y'all soon. Yeah. All right guys, so we put in some more of the hot side piping. So for the driver's side header, what you're gonna wanna put on is this this small U-shaped, um, this small U-shaped bolt, I mean pipe, sorry. And it's gonna be angled weird because you're gonna have the one that also goes around the trans and they're both gonna be facing that way. So then you're gonna use the pipe that need to be fixed with the restriction and you're gonna push it through. There's gonna be a little space that it can go through. Under the motor mount. Under the motor mount, it'll be right next to it. And then the longer side will go towards the, uh, the, the one that goes under the trans and then the other one will match up with the U-pipe, so yeah. All right guys, so as you can see, we have our Y-pipe in, we'll, we'll, that's what we're gonna call it. So after that, you're gonna put in this pipe, which connects to the hot side of the turbo, and it also has the port for your wastegate. So that's what we're doing now, and next up is to put on the turbo. All right guys, so the turbo's finally on the car. Thing looks sick. So what's next is just putting on the downpipe and the cold side, right? The downpipe, exhaust, <laughs> the cold side. But yeah, this thing looks sick. So far the inside hasn't been that bad. The only thing that was bad for us so far has been like putting on the V-bands. But oh yeah, make sure you get um some like Tycon V-bands because the ones they give you in the kit is trash. I took one off and it broke. So make sure you get the good one. But yeah, guys, next up. All right, so um, now we're gonna put on the eBay Slim fans. This is pretty sketchy, I'm not gonna lie, because we're just holding it by zip ties. What we're gonna do is drill through the stock, the very side of the stock radiator, drill some holes into it, and then put some zip ties and tighten it. The middle, put two holes at each side. So what I'm gonna do now is just zip tie this one up and then do the same thing for the last side and these will be in. And then later I'll show you how to connect these to the OEM VQ ones, because these are kind of tricky. All right, so I got my broke boy set up with the zip ties, 
don't worry about it getting too hot because I'm a heat wrap the zip ties. But it's on here. That was a joke, by the way. I'm not going to heat wrap the zip ties. I think you should heat wrap the zip ties. But it's on here. Um, so next thing to do is wire it. So I was watching this video. And if you look at the OEM connector versus the the one I have, you notice that there's going to be four lines instead of two, which I have. So what we basically have to do, if you look at the, the part with the two clips on the top, the two on top are gonna to be going to negative, one is yellow, one is black, and then the ones on the bottom, the one that is green and the one that is blue goes to the positive. Did I say positive? Yeah, positive. Yeah, you said positive. Positive, it goes to the positive. So you're just gonna to have to splice those together, splice the wires and then shrink it and crimp it in whatever and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show y'all. All right, so now I have my oil draining. It'll go drain from the turbo to the oil pan conveniently. So that's nice. Um, pausing a little bit on the oil pressure sensor, I mean the oil pressure gauge, and just doing the fan. So like I was saying, I cut off the connector. Make sure that you're leaving this piece on because this is what clips into your regular harness. So what we're doing now is just separating the top and bottom. So if you will look at this, I don't know if your colors would be the same, but you're gonna look the top two, whatever wires lead up to the top two, for mine is black and yellow. That's gonna be your negative, and whatever's to your bottom, which is my blue and green, that would be your positive. So what we're doing now, since it's only two, is that we're gonna strip them and then twist them together and then connect them in here to your negative and crimp them. And that should be a good connection. And same thing for the positive. That's on the good. Same thing for the other side. All right, the fan is now completed. So what we did is just, after you finish crimping it together, just to protect it from any water or the ends touching each other and causing a shortage, make sure you Use some electrical tape and just wrap the whole thing. And now it should just fit just like an OEM fan would and half the size. So that's it for the fans. All right, so what we're doing now is that we're gonna take out the OEMs, cause this is, this is from factory. You can see nice Denso, still pretty clean, I'm surprised. And what we're gonna do is when, they say when you're um, modifying your car and turbo and then the best thing to do is get one step coated spark plugs cause that keeps the cylinder tense down. So we're gonna put that in. Easy job, just take out the cool packs, it's a 10 millimeter, pull it out. Make sure you don't over tighten your spark plug when you're putting it in so it doesn't just get destroyed. But yeah, we're just gonna do that now. All right, so here's our old Denso and here's our new NGK. The only difference I can tell is just look at the gap in. The, hold, on, hold on, let me let me get a, a, a view there. The yeah. NGK's... All right, there we go. The NGK has a smaller gap, so I guess that means colder cylinder tension, so I don't know. But we're gonna put these in now. I mean, cargo, vroom, vroom, you feel me? Big turds. Both, both of them make like big power because of these spark plugs. Yes, sir. 500 wheel off. Bruh, 500 wheel off the spark plugs alone. That's how we that's how we rocking. Look, look, look. You see what I'm talking about? Uh, he's official. He's official. You already know. He's official. Look. The spark plugs are done now. So what I'm doing is just put on the lower front and then upper, and then we just start the cold side. Um, I didn't exp I didn't tell you all this, but um, while we were doing this gasket, the holes are too small for the pipe itself. So we were trying to bore it out, and the coo, the the gasket actually wrapped around a coo sand and it cut him pretty bad. We actually had to go to the emergency room. It kind of cut off a day. But more importantly, a coo um, was hurt. It was pretty deep cuts, but um, he got the stitches, so he's doing better. So just make sure you guys are always being careful and don't do some dumb stuff and try to use it during the gasket. Learn for our mistakes. Yeah, because that boy got some insurance money to, to get now. But yeah, so um, we're just going to put on the cold side. I mean, the plenum, y'all know how to do that. And the cold side will show you how to now. And we go put on the inner coolie. All right, guys. So we're doing the gauges now. Um, the easiest way I think that you can do it is by... Oh, man, light suck. But it's disconnecting your steering shaft boot. It's four 10 millimeters. And then you're going to have... You're going to need two people. Unless if you're pretty good, you can do it by yourself. And just fish the wire through. So right now I have my oil pressure and my white band through and I just gotta do boots, but it's pretty easy. 
Alright, so I'm um, back with a little bit of advice. So if you're planning to run stock AC and keep it, what you're going to want to do, I did it incorrectly, so I had to remove the turbo and this downpipe. But what you want to do is first bend this down like 90 degrees so it, so you could fit this AC pipe behind the downpipe instead of right next to the pulley. Because before that's what I was doing and it was it was going to rub, it was going to mess it up. But now I should, AC should be saved. I have no problem running stock AC, everything should be straight. So, pointer to you. Officially put back together tomorrow morning because I'm tired. I just lost a spring for turbo blanket, so I'm mad. And y'all know, it's never good to work on the car when you're mad because you just flex it up. So I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. Um, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, it took me some time. It took me some time, but you know, you'll get there. Um, Jeremy over here being ugly, pulled up in the HR as usual. But uh, yeah, good progress. Um, put back together the front end. I think that's gonna be the hardest part to get. Putting back everything you took out, cause I don't know where some of this stuff goes, but we'll figure it out as long as we go. So yeah, see y'all tomorrow. All right, so to do your oil feed line, what we're gonna do is, this right here is your OEM oil pressure sensor. So all you're doing is just disconnecting this sensor, screwing this out, putting the T-fitting, put one for the, for the oil feed and then one for the this the sensor again the oem sensor and you're straight um what i was thinking i don't know if it's gonna work i don't know if it has enough space for three probably doesn't but i was gonna use the the one for the aem gauge to do it but if not oh well i just use the other side of this space but yeah so that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do just disconnect this clip this what's it called sensor and then unscrew it out and then put in your new T-fit. All right, so the T is in. Make sure when you put it in, use some Teflon tape, just so no liquid can leak out, no oil in this case. So all I gotta do now is just put in the feed line right here and then the OEM sensor right here. And then I'm, I'll just put the gauge sensor over there. I think that'd be okay. Cause I don't want to fit three T's off of this OEM fitting. I'm just gonna get the oil sandwich plate for the filter so i'm just gonna hit the baltimore real quick i found one on facebook marketplace for 15 so i'm gonna just pick that up and i'll be right back so yeah, i have installed that thanks to a cool he let me use his um adapter spacer so all you do is make sure you have your gasket on there this side it's pretty easy you just put it over like this and then you use this to tie it up make sure it's tight on there and yeah pretty easy so we're gonna do that and then put in the pressure sensor. All right guys, so the car is put back together, not for the cold side. Quick uh, update, we destroyed the AC line, so we did all that work just not to have AC, but it's all good, you know, race car said. But, um, so we're just tightening up the plenum and we're gonna, who's taking off the mat for me? And then we're just gonna show you how the top, the cold side goes. All right guys, so, all the cold side is somewhat in. So what you're gonna have to do is this little elbow piece, then your math, then this pipe with your blower valve, coming down to this pipe that wraps around right in front of the crank pulley <clears throat> and these fans, then this U pipe in the cooler, and then another pipe like that and then servo. So um I'm not gonna say this completes the video, but uh, we're pretty damn close. <laughs> we're pretty damn close to it. I'm excited. Tuning day is, what, 19 days from now? But uh, 23rd of July. Yeah, 23rd of July. Cross my fingers. 400 wheels to go. <laughs> this is what get, because I didn't understand it before, but I do get it now. So if you have a tile like me, you're gonna see three airports on the bottom side. So one, two, and then this would be the third one. And the issue H2, is water you can leave open because we don't have any water coming in through this. So what you're gonna wanna do is leave the top open because this is a vent. This is only plugged in if you're using a electronic boost controller. So I'm not, I'm just running off the spring. So I should be okay without this one. And you're gonna plug in two. And then here is where you're gonna put this one. And that's gonna go to your air pressure. All right, so now I understand um, spring pressures. I did it completely wrong. So I'll show you 
and it kind of explained to you. So there's a chart that I'll put right here. Um, what I had in before was the green spring, which is a four pound. So basically the max the turbo would have made is four pounds. So that was incorrect. So if you look at the chart, if I want to run around 10 pounds, so for 10.15, you would need a red and black spring. So what you do is just put in the smaller spring first, the red one, should line up. And then put in the bigger one over that. So now I should be good to run 10 pounds. Of course, this isn't straight, but I'll fix that off camera. All right, guys. All right, guys. So it's that point in time where we do the first start. So right now we're just checking for um, if any clamps are loose. We just tighten up the clamps. And then now we're adding the oil. After we're done adding the oil, and then um, we're gonna get it check for any other um, type of leaks or anything like that. So after we add the oil, we won't let you guys know. Oh boy. <laughs> now at least check number one straight. Let me just look under for myself. So yeah, I should have no leaks. Um, so RZG sent me my base map. So what I need to do is just flash it, but my battery's dead. So I'm kind of scared. I'm low key scared about that, bro. Cause my battery's dead. What? My battery's dead. And I have to flash it and I need ignition. So the battery needs to charge. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I gotta do that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't think we would get this far. But yeah, um, gotta do that. Um, let's put the connectors, make sure everything's good. But um, yeah, we're about ready to start. We just need to tune it first. I swapped bags with Pooh's mom, so now this thing should be ready to start. So what we're gonna do now is put on the base map. Um, I had the people at RZG send me one. It's pretty simple to do, but it's my first time, so if I get it wrong, for my mistakes. Before we even flash this, let me just go ahead and go through the instructions for both of you from RZG's website. So, when you have all your stuff, um, it seems that, oh yeah, make sure you find your part number. So then when you go in there, I'll say it'll say ECU ready when it's ready. So right now it's still searching for my ECU. I'm guessing because I haven't turned on ignition yet, but I do have a license on my cable, so I should be straight. Um. So yeah, it doesn't seem hard to do. So let's do it. We're gonna turn on ignition now. So, let's see. So it says ECU ready. So now I need to. That's what I said. Yeah, ECU ready on top. So it's connected. Mhm. Mm now I need to. I lucky need to read this again. I'll get it right. Um, what's your? Why is your air fire blank? Hmm? Why is your air fire blank dot dot dot? Cause it's all air. Okay. No fuel. Alright, so um kind of a mishap. That's why that last video was fucked. But um what happens is that there is a an air on there and, and they sent me a cable that I guess was already used. So that's pretty lame. But um I called up Rev and they sent me a updated a update for the cable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and upload that right now. And now my um I should have a license on the car. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Searching for ECU, found it. Cable management, update license, and here's the update. Open it, license update successful. Good. Upriff standard license, let's see. Good, license on cable. All right guys, so now 
to the part where I was trying to do. We're gonna flash the car. <laughs> Man, oh, they're still looking for East View. We'll give it a second to look for it. All right, so I find the East View. So we're gonna do flash to and file. Here's the base tune once again. Gonna open it. So the warning, you're gonna flash stock ECU. Just require removal of a license from your cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Flash. I see something blink up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my slip light. Hands are on. Fans work. Yay! I wired the fans correctly, so that's good. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Yo. <laughs> Guys, so as usual, another problem. So. What the hell? The no. So um, what happened was that somehow in the middle of the tune the cable disconnected which is not good so i called rzg they said disconnect the battery right away and she said just to make sure everything's okay try and crank up the car so that's what i'm going to do now this is so right now. Oh, it's so nervous this too, isn't man. even the regular crank this is just a crank to make sure shit isn't fucked up so here it goes clutch in Uh-oh. Does that mean all right for all you O3 G35s, all you that are cursed to have one, um before you get it tuned, this is what you have to do. Cause I just tried to tune it and it said no can line not detected. So um, it's not too bad. So what you're gonna have to do is pull out your OBD2 port. It's just two fourteen. I mean two Phillips head. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use like a small little probe or whatever to push out this pin from number three and you're just going to relocate it to number 14 so right here so you're going from here to there and then that should be it so after doing everything the, i switched the can lines from position three to 14. make sure when you're taking it out there's this little clip right here that you're going to want to fold open that's going to allow it to release so when you do that, it should be good. The car just reflashed and everything is good. So I'm gonna add some coolant and then start it up. You're not in gear, right? Because I know that thing will lock them chance. Sounds like a VQ now. Hey, Mr. Samuel, could you unplug the battery thing? It's beeping. How do you feel, Mr. Jair? I'm happy, but I got a tick engine light and I sound like a VQ now. So I know one thing I didn't cover in this car was what I had to do for wiring, cause that was really something other than the can. So wiring up the gauges is pretty straightforward. What I use is this grommet. Damn. What I use is that grommet for the, behind the, what's it called? The brake pad, brake pedal. So um, for O3s, our cars don't come with wide bands from the factory. So you're gonna need a gauge that has a wide band reading and a login capacity like the AM one. So what you're gonna have to buy is a DB9 connector and use a program like TerraTerm that could record your logging. And one thing that the AEM thing showed 
AM uh, paper showed, and it actually wasn't like that for my case, was that they want you to do pin two and pin five. Pin five for ground and pin two for power. But in my case, I, this is the blue wire. I just extended the white one. In my case, I had to do pin three and pin five. So that worked out for me and now I'm able to log. All right, guys, so this is the end of the vid. I just wanna thank you guys. Please leave a thumbs up if you made it all the way to the end and if it helped you, I would really appreciate that. Um, I know this video is long and I, I'm so sorry guys, but I just wanted to put all the clips I had of the installation in the wind just so it would be, I guess, you know, you could refer back to this video in the future and just, you know, go through it. I'm gonna try my best to label it in subsections so it'll be easier for you guys to find exactly which part you need. But yeah, I also want to give a huge shout out to all my friends and family that helped me along with this. My dad, Aku, Nate, Jeremy, James, and every hand that helped. Even people on Instagram, um, you know, followers and all that. Thank you guys so much. I couldn't have done this without you. As far as my audience, whoever's watching this, I hope this whole video could help you. If there's anything that is unclear, please feel free to DM me. I don't care if you feel like you're annoying me or bugging me with asking me so many questions, ask them. I really do not care. Ask a whole essay if you want to. I will try my best to get back to everybody. And, you know, with all my opinions in any way, I can help you guys. Because I really want to see more boosted VQs in the community, man. Um, I really had a great experience with it. I love it. It's, you know, it's really, um, my life has changed as, as, Whack as that might seem, my life has really changed ever since this thing, you know, just uh, just doing it myself, my first, you know, I guess build, you could say. But yeah, so, you know, my um, my IG is jumpboy23. You could also DM my boy, Aku. His IG is VQ underscore fru. And of course, you could DM straight six, which is a page that we're all active on. And as far as what's coming up for the channel, we have a lot more content coming. I know we always say that, but, um. I, I actually mean it. Um, Aku's boosting this car as well. So they're going to see a lot of clips on that. Jeremy still has his Z. Um, Nate also has a GTI now. And he's going to be doing some fast boy stuff to it as well. I think he also has a turbo kit he's going to put on it. Or some type of like turbo upgrade. Um, and as far as me, I did some changes to the G. I'll probably post it in the next video. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you guys like it. I'll have some sound clips as well as the first drive. Just in advance, I didn't get it any clips of tuning day. So sorry about that, but I was tuned by RZG. I'm not gonna say numbers, but um, I am very happy with it. <laughs> it. The car feels great. It's um, it's really good. So yeah, guys, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see more videos. But anyways, guys, once again, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, please leave a like, share to your friends. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, guys.